about how sweet you are than how, you, how, how right you are. So, the devil says, I want this fellow to yoke up with that fellow. He tries, he, uh, the liberal holds his hand out, the fundamentalist says, uh uh, go away. And uh, the devil says, I'm not true. So he puts the new, uh, neo orthodox in here, who believes like the liberal, but talks like the fundamentalist, in an effort to fool the fundamentalist, and he holds his hand out, and most fundamentalists said, no, we, we see through that too. The devil said, I'm not true. The devil said, I'll bring a new evangelical in here, who believes like the fundamentalist, but doesn't want to bear his stigma, but talks like the liberal. And he holds his hand out. And some fundamentalists uh, fell um, uh, for that. But thank God, most of us did not. So, the devil says, I'm not true. So he stepped down again. So, he says, I'm not true. Now, what's the devil trying to do? He's trying to get the liberal yoked up with the fundamentalist. Now, he'll put in as many folks in here as he has to. What's going on here? Just stand there holding hands, huh? And uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, make much of this, but when these guys are holding hands, Brother Eddie whispered, can I be next? And uh, But anyway... So, uh, anybody want to play tricks again? So, now the devil's trying to get the, the liberal over here joined up with the fundamentalist. And he'll go to any extent. So what did he do? He finally knocked a home run. He brought in a political campaign and joined up with the new evangelical, held his hand out, and the fundamentalist fell for it. And the fundamentalist reached out, reached out, and took his hand. Now listen to me now. You just saw what's happened in this generation. And you just saw what's destroyed more churches than any other single thing in this generation. I mean, what the liberal couldn't do and what the new, uh, new orthodox couldn't do, what the new evangelical couldn't do, I mean, the political mess did. And so we got uh, wrapped up. And, listen, I was down in, in Dallas, Texas. I was called down there to a meeting. And I almost fell for this. I was called to a special, and it sounded so good. Listen to me now. It sounded so good. They called a meeting of about uh, 20 or 25 leaders in America. I mean, I tell you some of the fellows who were there. W.A. Criswell, uh, Dr. Stanley of First Baptist Church Atlanta, Dr. Theodore Elk, uh, who was at that time in charge of the Bible broadcast, Dr. Jerry Falwell, Dr. Egan Rogers, who at that time was the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and Dr. Bill Cofford, and many others were there in that meeting. And Dr. Al Janney called that meeting and stood up and he said, Gentlemen, it's time that God's people decided to take over the politics of America. He said, we're going to organize and we're going to take over the, the precincts of America and we're going to take over the Republican Party and so forth and we're going to organize. Boy, that sounded good. It, it sounds good to anybody if you don't stop and think what 2 Corinthians 6.14 says. So... Uh, boy, I, I was all for it. I, boy, I was gung ho. I was ready to charge hell with a squirt, and I was all ready for it, you know. And we were sitting around the table, and the fellow beside me was such a tremendous uh, personality. Oh, he had charisma. And we were chatting, and I was just really impressed with him. Are you listen now? Really impressed with him. And uh, we talked a while. And uh, after we talked a while, and we enjoyed each other. I enjoyed him, and of course, you understand, he enjoyed me. And we were sitting there eating, and I was all, and I, I was just like a fish, about ready to bite. And I said, by the way, what church do you pastor? He said, don't pastor any church. I said, well, what, what work are you in charge of? He said, I'm the director of the Church of Christ, Churches of Christ in America. Churches of Christ in America. That's the crowd that believes you've got to get baptized to get saved. Are you listening to me this thing? That's the crowd that believes you've got to join their church. That's the crowd that believes there's seven steps to salvation. You've got to work your way to heaven. And there I was about to join in a campaign to save America through politics, yoking myself up with a fellow who was the Church of Christ. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what's happened. Let me show you something else. The lady step back about a foot, 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 foot there. There's the other things that have happened in our generation. What the liberal couldn't do, what the new, new orthodox couldn't do, what the new evangelical couldn't do, the gay rights has done. And, and a fellow steps up here and, and joins hands with the... Uh, 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 <laughs>
<laughs> this is not working out real well. <laughs> hey, you're blushing, my lady. <laughs> and uh, boat life with Edwina. But, I mean, he says, look, uh, you're, you're against the gay crowd, right? And you're against the gay crowd. So he says, you're against the gay crowd? All right, hold out. Yeah. And he joins his hand. Now, what happened? Churches, listen, churches have, been, and by the way, he's in the same crowd he's with. He's joked up with him. I'll step back again, brother Eddie. I'll be better to you this time. Same, but here, here comes the abortion crowd. But then he, this, this guy here says, I want to organize America to fight abortion. Now, I don't care about the gay crowd. I don't, I hate it, hate the abortion, uh, the murder of unborn children. And to me, the murder of a child that's about to get born just as bad as the murder of a child just not born. But, uh, but, so he stands up and says, you're against abortion, aren't you? You're against abortion, aren't you? So why don't you hold your hand out and join, and we'll fight abortion together. I wonder how many churches in America. I, I can stand here right now and name a dozen churches that once were great soul winning churches that lost their zeal and are down to almost nothing now because they got wrapped up in the gay rights issue and the gay rights issue joined the fundamentalists with the liberals when nothing else in this world could do it. Same thing about the abortion crowd. Step back again. I have seen this happen over and over again. Our churches are, our churches are about to lose their freedom, we say. They're going to take our freedom away. They're going to, they're going to license our Sunday schools and, and, and give license for us to preach from the government. We're worried about that. So he steps up there, starts the campaign. You worried about that? Okay, then join up with him. Are you worried about that? Then join up with him. So what do they do? They're fighting for freedom. Now, we ought to fight for our freedom, but we ought to join join up with the devil to fight for our freedom. Who's the devil? He's the devil right there. And uh, and uh, so we ought not to do it. I mean, it's wrong. Will you sit with the House? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we fight against the gay rights? Yes, we ought to fight it. But let him fight alone, him fight alone, him fight alone. And if he can join up with the fundamentalists to fight it, okay. But don't join up with a bunch of people that think that Jesus Christ is an illegitimate child of an adulteress married to a blonde jar with an affair with a blonde German soldier and make fun of our Bible, our Christ, the virgin birth, and everything that's decent, everything that's right. We have deluded fundamentalism in our generation because of these very good things that have brought us together that nothing else could, could do. Same thing's true about separation of church and state. Separation of church and state. I got a call from Washington, D.C., from the headquarters, or at least from a headquarter uh, leader, of the the, uh, the Mooney movement. I mean the cults, the Mooney movement. And a bunch of fundamental Baptists and a bunch of other people had gotten together with the Moonies to have a big rally. They called it a common suffrage rally. Because the Moonies are being persecuted by the government, and these independent Baptists being persecuted by the government, and so they got together, and some of my good friends went to that stupid meeting. They called me on the phone, and they said, would you speak in Washington, D.C. at a big rally? I said, who sponsors it? They said, all of us get together. I'm, I'm a member of the, uh, of the Moonies. I don't know what the big name for it is. Moonies. He said, would you speak at our common suffrage meeting? I said, no, you suffer alone, I'll suffer alone. Uh, what was the devil trying to do? Trying to get him yoked up with him. Now, listen, I am for the Moonies having their freedom of religion, but I'm not going to fight for it. See? I'm for the Hare Krishna people for having their freedom of religion, but I'm not going to fight for it. I'm for them trying to pin flowers. I've, I've been had more, more you know, the boutonniere, want to sell you one, pin it on your lapel. I was in Washington, D.C. airport, and had about 15 Moonies. I uh, want to pin carnation, carnations on my lapel. I got sick of it. I went down to a little flower shop there in the airport and bought me a dozen carnations. Walked up there, one of those movies. I'm raising some money for a Baptist church. Would you buy my carnation? And I'm sick of it. I don't like it, but I'll fight, I'll fight for their right to do it, but I won't fight with them. See? I'll fight for freedom, but I won't fight with them to get freedom. Why? He's a liberal. So the devil, what, what, what the liberal could not do, 
what the new Orthodox could not do, what the new evangelical could not do, uh, the, the p- p- political campaigns did, the common suffrage campaigns did. Listen, just name these. Politics, gay rights, abortion, freedom, separation of church and state. I could give you a dozen churches under each one of those headlines. At one time, I had people saved every Sunday, had folks out soul winning, and the energy they used on soul winning, they began to use on this united campaign with all these people. But my Bible still says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It doesn't say, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers except for a gay rights campaign. Now, listen, you preacher boys here, don't you leave this college and get out and get sucked into this. And this church I've gone to 25, 30 years when I'm in heaven, don't you get sucked in this. This is what happens, you see. We, we, we unite for a good cause, and then, like this Church of Christ fellow, what a not delightful fellow he was. Well, I would have enjoyed talking to him for a long time. But uh, he said, I'm a director of the, of the National Churches of Christ in America. Well, immediately I said, I can't mess with this. So, the freedom campaign comes up, and you believe in freedom for the churches, don't you? Okay, draw up. You believe in freedom for the churches, don't you? Draw up. And so, the fundamentalist is with the liberal. And that's what's destroying America. There's something else destroying America. That's a bunch of men standing around holding hands with each other all the time. <laughs> so what do they do? Here's what we fundamentalists have done. And we're idiots, all but me. We're idiots. We have fought for our freedom only to give it up to each other. So what happens? We unite for a good cause, then we win that cause and find once we have united and the cause is over, that we differ on more important things than we agreed on. Let me give you a little history. You want to, you want to know the one man in, in American history, the one politician in early American history who did more to make it possible for us to sit here tonight and have this service than any single man was James Madison. James Madison joined up with Thomas Jefferson. They joined up with Patrick Henry and George Washington. But now James Madison was the guy that was stood, look, not just for separation of church and state. You know, our government says we stand for separation of church and state. No, they don't. They stand for the church leaving the state alone. But they don't stand for the state not leaving the church alone. James Madison said... The church should stay out of the state's business, and the state should stay out of the church business. He said it's just like two kingdoms, just like Canada and the United States. He said it's like two kingdoms. Now, here's what happened. George Washington, Patrick Henry, and Thomas Jefferson joined this campaign. And they won for us our freedom. But when they got through, they found that they differed on more important things, and then they divided on more important things after they had fought on this issue. Let me illustrate it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees in the Bible days, Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection from the dead. Uh, the Pharisees did. Paul was hated by both. The Sadducees and the Pharisees got together on a common cause, one issue, one issue, they hated Paul. Now that's what's happening in America. I'm going, to, I'm going to come back to this in just a minute, but let me, let, me, let me tell you how else this happens. A young lady, a young man, work on a bus route together. He loves poor people, poor children. She loves poor children. They work on this bus route. Don't miss this. They work on this bus route together, and they love the work, and he says, I admire her the way she works those little children. So he says, I think I love her. And she says, boy, I like that guy. He thinks about poor people, too. So they get married. That's not, that's not a good enough reason to get married. You don't get married over one issue. I mean, you don't marry her to work with little children. You get married, you marry her to work with you. Now, I'm not saying I think that would be a good, good way for, for the first impression. But you see, what happens is this. Somehow or other, we get so wrapped up on one issue things. Look out for the one-issue churches. Look out for them. Watch out for them, the one-issue churches. Look out for the one-issue people. 
Not one issue. That's all they fight for, one issue. Maybe it's tongues. Maybe it's anti-gay rights. Maybe it's freedom for the churches. 